In addition to praying the rosary on the five first Saturdays of the month and making the communion of reparation, Our Lady has asked us to keep her company for 15 minutes, meditating upon one of the mysteries contained in her Holy Rosary. Today we join her in contemplating the visitation. We join Saint Elizabeth sitting in her home. She has received an inspiration from God that the Virgin Mary is coming to visit her. She awaits the Virgin Mary's visit. God has whispered into her heart about this planned visit from the Holy Virgin. She even ventures out, straying far from her home, anticipating her arrival. Saint Zachariah is disturbed that his wife, already advanced in pregnancy, would be journeying, would be anticipating the arrival of a young relative barely known to her and one who had only been espoused very recently. Why would such a young woman make a visit to her cousin? We picture Our Lady. She has received the incarnate God inside her womb. After adoring the hidden Jesus within her, her mind is drawn to that message of the angel that her cousin Elizabeth is now in her sixth month that she who was barren has now conceived. Inspired by these words, Our Lady sets off, accompanied with Saint Joseph. We wonder what it was she told Saint Joseph, why they both needed to make this visit to Elizabeth. They journey together, through the hill country of Judea. They travel that journey with Our Lady perhaps seated on a donkey, a foretaste of their longer travels to Bethlehem and then later on their flight into Egypt. They are approaching Saint Elizabeth's house Saint Elizabeth catches sight of them. Perhaps she is patrolling the vicinity of her home. Perhaps she is already there near the edge of their land. She then catches sight of this relative of hers. Perhaps a relative she had not seen in many years. And she runs to her embraces her. What a mystery of joy. Although we don't see it, the child within her leaps with joy at being near to the Virgin Mary and the incarnate God inside of her womb. And whilst Jesus is only incarnate perhaps a week, perhaps two weeks, we see his almighty power at work in the sanctification of John the Baptist while he is inside St. Elizabeth. While he is there, enclosed in the womb, he is freed from the stain of original sin. He is a recipient of the benefits of the redemption. St. John the Baptist at that moment is so like Our Lady who herself is like to our Lord. They are each of them full of grace, each of them untouched by sin. We rejoice with the angels at seeing the greatest prophet that the world has seen being freed from grace so that he can offer a worthy preparation for the coming of the Messiah. 
Our Lady is conducted into the house of Zachariah and it's there we are told by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich that the Magnificat is recited. Elizabeth says the Magnificat and then together they repeat it back. A moment of tremendous joy. Saint Joseph is conversing with Zachariah using signs, using tablets, before at this moment Zachariah does not have his power of speech. We see them walking through the countryside together, these two holy men, while inside the home there is Saint Elizabeth with our Blessed Lady, singing the praises of God for a mystery that at this moment These two are the only human persons who are aware of it. The angels delight in seeing this first proclamation of the gospel, that God has become man in order to save his people from their sins. Now we turn to look inside Our Lady's Immaculate Heart, to ponder some of the virtues that are expressed in this mystery, some of her wondrous qualities that we may imitate them. We see, foremost of all, charity towards one's neighbour. The angel does not command Our Lady to visit her cousin. Perhaps at this moment, it seems at this moment, Our Lady has no knowledge of her cousin's pregnancy. There's no word from the angel that she's obliged to go and see her to make this journey. And yet Our Lady, on hearing of the need, on hearing of the potential need of her cousin, ventures to see her in order to be of some assistance. And how slow we are, how slow we are in offering a helping hand to someone in need, especially when it is a costly, a costly thing, as it would have been for Our Lady to make this journey. Her charity is also shown in the manner in which she stays about three months, presumably to the moment of St. John the Baptist's birth. She would have been of assistance there during this time, during this time of confinement where the Mosaic law would have laid down strict laws on a pregnant woman. So we contemplate and wonder at Our Lady's charity, aware of the need of her relative and constraining herself to assist her. And so we admire Our Lady's charity towards her neighbour so generous, so beyond what had been asked of her. Indeed, nothing had been asked of her, but her heart overflowed with generosity. On receiving our Lord inside of her, her heart ventured from love of God to love of neighbour. And how that ought to be the case for each one of us. We consider all the holy communions we have received. Have these Holy Communions transformed us into people who wish to be of service to those around us. The Blessed Sacrament, or strictly speaking, God himself inside of Our Lady, brought out a tremendous love and concern for those around her. How much this should be the case in every Holy Communion that we make. With the passing of years, we should be so on fire with love for those around us, wishing to assist them in whatever way we can, whether we are asked or whether it is not asked of us. How we ought to weep at how lacking in charity we are when we have the same help as Our Lady, the presence of God himself inside of us, in our case through Holy Communion, in hers through the Incarnation. We flow into then a consideration of the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Again, Our Lady was adoring the hidden Jesus inside of her all through that journey. 
What a consolation it was, having God inside of her. We think of ourselves, how little we consider our Lord Jesus present within us after Holy Communion. How quick we are to try and move our minds or allow our minds to be moved to worldly considerations, to leaving the church. Of course, eventually we do have to leave the church, but unlike Our Lady, we do not continue to focus on our Lord's presence, the fact that we have received him and that we have had a time in which he has been physically inside of us. Saint Elizabeth, Saint John the Baptist, they respond in adoration to the hidden Jesus inside of Our Lady. Their hearts are filled with joy. The Holy Spirit is given to them. I wonder, perhaps we would see, receive a like blessing if we made spiritual communions when we passed by the churches. How often we go past the Catholic Church without stopping to visit our Lord present in the Blessed Sacrament, without adoring him. And for that reason, we receive so few graces from the hidden Jesus enclosed in the tabernacle. I'm sure that whilst we only read in sacred scripture that St. John the Baptist and St. Elizabeth received actual graces through the nearness of the incarnate God to them, I'm sure that as Our Lady ventured on her journey, so many others would have been filled with actual graces, solely by the nearness of Jesus to them, hidden inside Our Lady's womb. And how it can be the same for us in our apostolic activity, in our day-to-day -day lives. I'm sure if we averted ourselves to the fact that Jesus was inside of us, I'm sure that that act of faith, especially in the in the hours after Holy Communion, that act of faith would bring so many graces to those around us. And perhaps we ought to avert our minds to the fact that Jesus is offering those around us graces solely by the fact that we have received the God himself through Holy Communion. And now finally, we consider once again Our Lady's deep humility. Saint Elizabeth praises Our Lady for carrying God within her. She says, how can it be that the mother of my Lord has come to visit me? For the moment your voice reached my ears, the child within my womb leapt for joy. And Our Lady begins the Magnificat, her hymn of praise to God. She doesn't absorb any attention on herself, but rather she immediately reflects the praise to God. She says, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. He has looked on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed because the almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. And she continues, every line of the Magnificat is a hymn of praise to God and an echo of Our Lady's deep humility. How quick we are when someone praises us to become absorbed in on our own small degree of virtue. And how when individuals fail to acknowledge this small degree of virtue, how slighted we can be, how we can share it with others and complain that our small degree of virtue has not been acknowledged. Our Lady has such a different approach. How her response is always one of giving praise to God and the great things that God has done for her in her life. Blessed Mother Mary, so humble in reception of praise, teach me, if I ever receive any compliments, to realise that all the good that I have done flows from the grace that you have given me and the talents and gifts that you have given me in my nature. Almighty God, I thank you for this mystery of the visitation, where I learn what it is to have true charity to my neighbour, bringing God to them, bringing salvation to them, bringing grace to them. I thank you that in this mystery, I'm also disclosed even more fully 
to the humility of my mother Mary and of the adoration that I ought to give to Jesus Christ, truly present in the Blessed Sacrament, just as much as he was present physically in the womb of our Blessed Lady. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.